What is up guys, Rick Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we have the complete guide for how to beat the brand new Pit of Heresy dungeon just added into Destiny 2 with the Shadow Keep expansion. And so, let's get started. Now first things first, you're gonna go and talk to Eris Morn. She is going to give you a new quest item requiring you to do the brand new Altars of Sorrow public event activity and you're gonna have to loot specifically a tier 3 chest within this activity but especially considering how many players can join in in the altars of sorrow that's really not too difficult it's tier 3 or higher you can go all the way up to tier 7 I believe so once you do participate in the altars of sorrow by just killing nightmares it's pretty self-explanatory then you loot that chest that quest step is going to update. You go back to Eris Moore and talk to her one more time. And then you're going to have the option to open your directory. And on the moon, you're going to see specifically the Pit of Heresy dungeon accessible and ready to start. It's at 940 light. So just level up accordingly. So, after starting this dungeon up, you're going to run forward and pretty soon discover a massive cliffside. But there's a bunch of towers and buildings within this cliffside. And accompanying many of these hive buildings are going to be big glowing green symbols. These symbols are going to help you figure out which buildings to go for and which doors to open up. So, how do you do that? Well, you're going to need to go to this big central tower located near the top of the cliffside, as you can see in the background gameplay. And if you look in a blocked door, you're going to see a large open room and there's going to be three hanging hive symbols in between two large pillars, again, as you can see in the background gameplay. Now, how you open up this blocked door and enter into this room is by killing the pit keeper knight. Near all of these buildings that have this blocked doorway, including the ones you need to go to and the ones you don't need to go to, there's going to be these pit keeper knights. If you kill one, it's going to allow you into that back room. So you kill this one, you go in, look at the symbols, take a screenshot, memorize them, whatever you want to do, but these are the three different towers you need to go for. The towers that have the symbols above them that you're seeing right here. Now there doesn't seem to be an order you need to do these in, as long as you get these three symbols done, you're good to go. It's going to unlock the final room that's going to let you progress further into the dungeon. So, look around for the matching symbols, once you find one, head down to that tower. Remember that in each one of the towers, and sometimes outside of them, there's going to be these kind of hive elevators located all around. These are nothing but literally elevators. They're used to help you get around uh, the map, help you ascend back to that main door if you need to look at the symbols again or whatever. But I digress. Once you've gone to the location of the matching symbol, you kill the pit keeper of that area and open up that blocked doorway. Once you go into that just opened room, you're going to find a certain boss. It's either going to be a knight or a wizard or a shrieker. Depending on which boss it is, you're going to have to kill it in a certain way because all three of these bosses are going to be immune to anything you can do normally. All guns, supers, etc. So how do you damage them? Well, you need to get yourself a sword. And roaming around the cliff sides are going to be several different sword bearer knights. In fact, there's one that spawns in that first room you opened up to see the three different hive runes. So you can always open up that, then grab a sword, and then go and find the matching symbols. But regardless, depending on which boss you have, you're going to have to damage them specifically with that sword again in a certain way. So, if you get the knight boss, you're going to need to smack it to death. The only way you can damage it is by literally melee attacking him with the sword. Then, if you get the wizard boss, you're going to have to do the heavy attack for your sword. And this is an all new feature. Normally, you slam the ground with a hive sword. But for this specific dungeon sword, you're actually going to, well, basically do what the Black Talon or a Dawnblade does and shoot an attack at at range. This is the only way, again, you can damage that 
wizard boss. And then finally, for the Shrieker, you're gonna have to block, and that's gonna reflect the incoming attacks from the Shrieker back to itself from your sword, and that will eventually kill the Shrieker. And once you have found and killed all of the three bosses that are located at those three matching symbols you're looking for, then you're going to see a glowing green pillar of light shooting down from the sky. This indicates where you need to go next. Go to that location, kill the pit keeper for that location. It opens up a blocked doorway and lets you continue forward. Now, as you continue forward after getting your loot, you're going to find a lot of doorways, a massive, massive wall of doorways. If you stand in front of pretty much all of these doorways, you will instantly die. Something's going to come out of the doorway and just punch you right in the face. There's actually a tiny little slit that you want to go through to continue with the dungeon, as you can see right here. There's also a specific door without a ruin that you're going to need for the exotic Xenophage quest. Moving on from there, however, let's say you went through the slit and you're continuing to the next encounter. For this one, you're going to find a bunch of totally invincible, massive hive ogres that are likely going to, well, absolutely destroy you. Your job here is to completely avoid these ogres. There is no way to kill them, you just need to avoid them. And importantly, this arena that you've just entered is broken up into thirds. Everything is in thirds. So, if you find yourself on the far left-hand side where there's a cliff, that is the left side. Then there's a middle side, and on the far right, there's a bunch of like doorways, there's a bit of a hive structure, but it's entirely blocked off with a wall, you can't go any further right. Now it's important to visualize this because you're going to be moving between these thirds and accomplishing objectives. Essentially, to avoid these ogres, you're going to need to use the tunnels located all around this arena. Some of them you can't go through until you've shot the hive kind of film protecting it and then you can slide right in these tunnels. Now, these tunnels will have caves, larger caves, one in the middle, one on the left, and one on the right. In these caves is going to be a bunch of enemies, so if you're having trouble finding a certain cave, use your radar. When you see like a red blip and it's not an ogre, follow that to the cave that's going to be full of enemies, and specifically, the enemy you're looking for is a yellow bar knight. Killing this guy will drop a void orb that you can pick up and then move around. You want to take this orb specifically to one of three doorways and it's going to allow you to slam this orb on the doorway as you can see and it's going to diffuse one of the three runes on the doorway. Now there's actually three different doorways here and like everything else, one's in the middle, one's on the left, and one is on the right. So if you've diffused the left doorway, then you need to get other orbs to deposit into the middle and the right doorways. And it doesn't seem to be necessary to kill the, you know, left side knight and deposit that orb specifically on the left side. You can deposit it wherever you want. Now, once you have deposited on all three doors, all three of them will open at once, allowing you into the second part of this encounter. And the ogres will not follow you inside, they'll stay in the tunnels. Now, in this second part of the arena, there's going to be a totem in the very center. Go to this totem, and it's kind of like the Annihilator totem back from King's Fall, if you're a D1 veteran, but essentially, you need to constantly have people next to this totem. If you don't, it'll expand, eventually glow red, and it will wipe your team. So, as you're staying near this totem in the little plate beneath it, you are going to be getting a debuff, specifically Curse of Suffering, and it's going to start out normal and then go to times two, times three, and ascend. If it gets too high, you will be killed. So, how do you get rid of it? Well, essentially, there's going to be different knights, just like the ones that you killed to get into this arena, but they're going to spawn on the left side, middle, or right, as you can see from the background gameplay. So if you snipe them, if you kill them, they're going to drop orbs. So one person from your team goes, grabs the orb, runs back, and right next to this Annihilator totem, there is a door that you're eventually going to try to make your way through, and you can slam on this door. 
when you do this entire process, grabbing the orb and slamming it, it will remove all of the stacks of Curse of Suffering that you have. So that's what you need to do. You need to have your team holding down this Annihilator Totem, but you need to rotate teammates out to slam on the doorway to get rid of their Curse of Suffering. So someone goes first, someone goes second, someone goes third, the guy who went first goes again. You need to constantly be doing it in order. If you don't, someone could get way too high in Curse of Suffering and die. While you're holding out here, stuff like Bubble, stuff like Well of Light is fantastic. I would warn you that there are some Boomer Knights that spawn up at the very top. You definitely want to snipe these guys because they have a, a totally clear line of sight on you and they are vicious. They just go rapid fire with those boomers and they can destroy you pretty easily. But after just holding out and constantly slamming and rotating through your teammates to get rid of Curse of Suffering, eventually you will have slammed enough times and the door behind you will open, allowing you to continue to the next section of the dungeon. Alright, so here we have a bit of a jumping puzzle. There is a lot of rotating spiky things that will kill you. But if you kind of jump down this initial opening, you're going to see this right here. It's going to be a little bit of an object and it's going to display three different runes. Essentially, this is telling you kind of where you need to go. Because in this large arena where you can jump and go through all these different locations. There's ledges on the cliff side, there's a normal hallways that have the spinning rotating things of death, all of that stuff, but throughout there there's going to be three different locations that have wizards. You're gonna have to kill the three different wizards and actually they're in the locations associated with these ruins. However, there doesn't seem to be an excess of wizards. There's like only three that spawn. So really just explore around, look on your minimap for those red dots. That tells you that if there's enemies nearby, you're going in the right direction. Look for the hive snipers if they're shooting at you because the wizards will spawn with some sniper acolytes. And once you kill all three of the wizards, all of the runes, as you can see, are going to go down at this end doorway. And once all three are down, then it's going to open up and allow you to progress further. Of note, there is actually a secret chest here located. Well, you can see the background gameplay of us getting it. And if you do open it up, you seem to get a free essence, which is nice. In any event, after getting through the doorway that has opened up for killing the wizards, you're going to continue forward for just a little bit longer, and eventually you will find this large opening right here, and this is the place where the final encounter takes place. So you're going to see the massive hive boss in the very center, kind of praying to whatever that massive crystal is, and then there's going to be three different locations on the sides. Now these three locations are going to be where you need to go and you're going to encounter those exact same three bosses that you encountered in the very first encounter. So one of the bosses, like one of the sides is going to have the knight there, one is going to have the wizard, one is going to have the shrieker. And of course there's going to be a sword bearer knight that spawns near the center of this arena. So you kill that guy, grab a sword, go to one of the thirds and damage the boss with the appropriate method. Remember, if it's the knight, you need to actually melee them. If it's the wizard, you need to do the ranged heavy attack. And if it's the shrieker, you need to reflect its bullets back to it. Then, once you've killed all three of these different mini bosses, essentially, they are all going to drop a void orb. Pick it up, bring it to the center of the arena, and there's going to be three different locations that you can slam them. So, once you've done it three times in the three locations, the center of the arena is going to start to glow green, and this is where you're going to need to head. Now, when you're in this green glow, you can actually do damage to the main boss. If you're outside, it's still going to be immune. So, you know, use a well, use a bubble, whatever you have, and absolutely go to town with high damage dealing weapons. Wendigo, Swarm of the Raven, Izanagi's Burden, you guys know what to use. But if you are not able to take down this boss, he is going to start 
piercing his sword into the ground and that green crystal in the very center of this arena will start to glow red. If that happens, you need to evacuate that middle area as quickly as possible, get out of that green glow, and then it's going to explode, wipe anyone inside, and you're going to have to do the exact same thing as you just did. So if you're in the position where you didn't kill him the first time, you're gonna have to kill those three bosses again in those same exact ways and then get back to the center to damage him or you can just one phase him. In any event, as soon as you do kill the boss, he is going to drop your last loot chest and congratulations, you've just beaten the brand new dungeon. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickCacus. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.